96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Networks. La 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 Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I represent Bahamian people I from Nassau, Bahamas Big up in town, bro Boy, I from Bethan, bro. 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 Right between West and Augusta, where them two roads meet, they call it Wilkinson Street. Manners and respect was like a sign blind check. It seems the ones that come in after quick to disrespect. You see, this life in the ghetto never easy. So many hungry days, break till it grieve me. Boy, I doing the best I can. Trying to turn my dollar to a hundred grand. I represent the ghetto people I from Nassau, Bahamas, big up in town, bro Boy, I from in town, bro get up, get up, get up. Don't take no bathtub, no drive on no joke If you find fire, you'll definitely find smoke in town, bro Boy, I from in town, bro In town, I say up and running Caliban say my show, but don't ever give in Seven years of farming, watch the crops them come in. Two days see a humble thing, the lion sleeping. But they ain't for no reason, reason. Only God that I believe in, living. Watch them only passion for a season, season. God bless, I go weed them, weed them. I represent the ghetto people I from. Nassau, Bahamas, big up in town, bro. Boy, I from in town, bro. Don't take no bathtub, no bribe or no joke. If you find fire, you'll you definitely find smoke. Bit on, bro. Boy, I from bit on, bro. Bro, bro. Ah, my son, that boy, what happened? Huh? Shred of the bit on, boy, I from bit on. What are you doing to me, you bet? Oh, no. Again? I represent Bahamian people, I from Nassau, Bahamas, big up in town, bro. Boy, I from in town, bro. Don't take no bathtub, no bribe or no joke. If you find fire, you'll you definitely find smoke in town, bro. Boy, I from in town, bro. bro. Good night, Bahamas, and welcome to Garden Radio 96.9 FM. I am your host, Valentino Brown, a.k.a. Scoochie Scrooge or Scroogey. Uh, many other nicknames. They call me Daddy. Uh, telephone numbers tonight are 323-6232, and 325-4259. And you can text us, powered by BTC, at 422-GR96. And also, you can listen to us on Guardian Radio 969, Cable of Bahamas, and also live radio. I want to say a wonderful good night to each and every one of you. I hope that you will enjoy your Friday night, and I hope that we have a wonderful conversation tonight. Uh, before we begin the show, we have two wonderful guests in studios. Uh, everyone knows Nate the Great, Nathaniel McKinney. Uh, he's been absent. He's been very busy. Uh, he's changed his profession. He is in the Christianity world now. And he's given back tremendously uh, to the country and to the next generation. And he's also providing a platform for many less fortunate kids around in the country. And also, we have a wonderful lady. Uh, she resides in the U.S. Uh, she uh, has a long and beautiful portfolio in the nursing industry. But she's here today to discuss uh, some of the life skills uh, to the Bahamas. So. For ladies who are inter interested in the nursing industry, uh, please have a pen and paper close to you. 
uh, be attentive, and this is going to be a wonderful, wonderful show here tonight. But before we get to our guests and they introduce themselves, I was just recently um, listening to the entire world talk about global warming and climate change. And I see our prime minister went off uh, travel, traveling to discuss the issue of climate change. He has discussed the issue on a few occasions traveling lately around the world, and climate change is a big issue that is plaguing our world. But the thing is, what uh, I really get to understand, if we don't have good activism and activist persons who care about the country and care about the world, uh, if it wasn't for these great people around the world, whether it's in the Bahamas, whether it's in the UK, whether it's in Russia, Germany, anyone who fights uh, for the protection of the environment, whether it's animals, dolphins, lions, t tigers, trees, uh, even the, uh, thinking for oil. And all of this has affected us over the course of humankind, and it's destroying the earth. And, uh, and the funny thing is, some people have been telling this for a very, very long time. And I just want to show you that there's great people in the world, and if we paid attention to these individuals, we wouldn't have been in this position that they were threatened by inland flooding. Some countries are saying now, especially the islands would be flooded. They're afraid of the uh, ice melting in the North Pole or the Arctic, which they feel is going to be catastrophic uh, for the world and endangers, you know, a lot of people. And it's because of us burning fossil fuel, the same fuel that we take out the ground, the same oil. Now that has actually polluted the earth and it's causing the ice to melt and other drastic things are happening, all because of this. And I just want to place uh, a little message to the world of this great man, David Atterberg, who, to me, is one of the greatest, uh, what I call, what I, what, what I would call a man, environmentalist in the world. And if we did listen to him, we are listening now, we would be in a better position. Uh, Mr. Producer, could we play that message to the world? Recently, at COP26, 120 nations came together in an effort to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. While a 1.5 degree rise will still bring significant changes with it, to stand any chance of saving what remains of our frozen planet and saving ourselves from the devastating consequences of its loss, we must stick to this commitment and honor it, no matter how challenging it might be. We know that climate change is happening. We know the main driver of climate change is human activities, is human emissions. As a whole human species, we are not recognizing the impact that we're having and the fact that we do need to do something. But the important thing is that I believe all of these processes are reversible. If everybody can make the effort of doing just one thing, reducing their carbon footprint. Consume less, think about what we need, what we really want. Think more sensibly about the journeys we take, about the food we eat, how that's produced. Figure out a lifestyle that is sustainable. And we're right at the point where we can generate all the power that we need from renewable sources like solar and wind. To do that, you need to really transform society as a whole. We can speak to our representatives to try and reconsider energy policies. If enough of us are educated about the effects of carbon in the atmosphere. Even the most poorly educated politician will respond to what their citizenry wants. The awareness and the concern is greater now than it ever has been. So that gives us some hope. It won't be easy, but it's doable. 
If you can do something about it, then do it. Instead of just thinking about it. If you can do something about it, then do it. We can do it. It's within our power. And yes, he had been saying it for many, many years. He had been to many summits, engaged the world. And for many years, he was telling the importance of the trees. He was telling the importance of our ants. He was telling the importance of each and every animal that God has made available for us here on earth. But we have overused it. Uh, many people don't know this. Uh, I believe that the earl that is in, in the earth is the blood of the earth. The earth itself is a living organism. And if we don't understand that the damage we're doing to it by killing the trees, by poisoning the oceans, or dumping nuclear waste, building nuclear bombs, and then we're dumping the waste in the ocean, killing the fees, killing the fishes, giving them cancer, then we consume it and give us cancer. You know, we are destroying ourselves. We, we uh, have a, uh, what you call a system, Nate, uh, what the system is when we have the all the sewers hook up, and then we dump it in the ocean, you know, like all the bleach and how we use the bathroom and all the turtle tissue, the detergents, and all we wash it. We have this big thing that stores up all of the waste, and then what we do? Hey, eh? we take it and we dump it in the ocean. We pollute the ocean. We kill in the ocean. We are draining the the earl, which is actually the blood of the earth, and causing earthquakes. You know, we drilling. Uh, function holes in the earth, you know. We cut nine trees in the, in, the, in the, if you look at in the Amazon rainforest in Brazil, we're seeing where the natives, you know, are, are fighting for their their culture and their wilderness, and yet still we're seeing the timbers getting cut down. We're seeing animals being displaced. We're seeing extincts, extinction of animals. Do you know that one extinction of animal tells us a sign that if one can go, Right? So indirectly it'll be us. They say if all if the bees just die, they say if the bees just die, it's the end of mankind. Simple as the bees. They say if the bees die, that's the end of mankind. Mm -hmm. Simple stuff. Even though I'm talking saying the bees right and we say, Well, yes, if the bees die, if the, all the bees in the world dies, the earth dies because the, the the bees pollinize all the trees and they travel from parts of the world and countries. And they pollinize the trees and make them uh, grow fruits and vegetables. Without the bees, that's it. Without vegetables and, and, and the trees, there would be no oxygen. Mm -hmm. But yet still, we're cutting on the trees. We ain't making no sense. You know, it reminds me of Captain Planet. I'm closing on this. It reminds me of Captain Planet. I right? see so you two were talking about it earlier on the studio. Mm -hmm. And Captain Planet shows you this. You know, Surge Knight represents a corporation. Captain Planet was the Earth itself fighting back. It was a wonderful cartoon that used to come on Zedness. I mean, I always used to watch it and be intrigued by it. But it was very educational, and it, and it tells you uh, what, we, what we ought not to do. And we took that show off the air. And now look at us today. So we have two great uh, examples. The late uh, Sir David Adamant, and we used the Captain Planet. Those two right there so was a, a pattern that we should have followed. Now we have to try to follow it now. I, don't, I hope it's not too late. So I'm encouraging our prime minister who speaks highly about climate change and global warming, oil drilling in Nassau. If, he's, if he is so concerned about climate change, then the first thing he needs to take a look at and try to cancel is the oil dr drilling exploration going on in the Bahamas. Because the more we drill in the earth, earth we are killing the earth, we are taking the lubricant out of the earth, and the earth is going to fight back. So I just want you to know that everything is, is tied in. All right? And that's my two cents on the matter. You, wanna, you guys want to comment on, on the matter before we get to our topic, if I make any sense on it? You make sense. I mean, the reality is um, uh, bees pollinize the, fl the trees. I'm sorry, the flowers. The plants won't be able to have food. Um, and then we'd have a food shortage for mankind. So um, everything working according to the, the <laughs> everything working according to good, according to the will of God, and, and it's God's will that 
um, um, that these animals and um, species of every kind, because when he made the earth, he made of every kind, he made mankind, he made um, the bees and their kind, he made um, the fishes and uh, the seas of their kind. So these these kinds are very important, you know what I mean, to to to, to humanity, and um, we we tend to, and then finally we tend to. What we tend to do is we are we are going in the, in a in a slope for 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 currency and money. money. So we 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 now. Getting rid of um, uh, we are we are talk we are using um, big mass production companies like for instance we still we still bringing diesel to the Bahamas and it's dangerous etc. And and, and 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 fumigating our skies and so forth like that and we have all the sun to actually um, deal with solar panels so the the corporations and the companies it, at the end of the day is all about money you can't serve two masters but everything at the end of the day boils down to currency. So um, what we have been doing, and along with other persons, but I can speak and contest to what me and Scoogey have been doing over the years since I have came in partnership with Scoogey, and before that I used to sponsor. And I, I didn't understand what he was doing at that level, but to have hundreds of little children playing ball late night, I mean, I thought it was crazy, but when I started, I realized, is, wow, they have nothing to do, right? So, so the thing is, it's not about money for the inner city for most of the most of the time because they don't know they poor until it's addressed through television and other things. So changing the network causes people to now start to thief and rob and and, and, and be video vixen whores on T V and, and doing a whole bunch of a mess just to to think that that's the reality of, of living. And also with our gentlemen, they think the reality is um buying Jordans and, and, and gold chain, external blingers. That's all they could be at this point. Because they don't have anything to shine in the inside, so they they possess these these things from watching TV. And Captain Planet, he's a hero, bring pollution down to zero. They were they were our our you know they were our heroes, you know. And they taught us how to clean. They? Kawhi and um, um I, I forget some of the characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Blank, Blanca or something like that. The girl. Yeah. So it it changes over a period of time. Now the network, it's a multi. The the media is a multi million dollar industry. So young women are using, um, losing their, um, is this thing tying from, oh, from pollution tie and they're polluting the earth. Yes. The, 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 the humans are polluting the earth by using themselves to pollute the earth. So, <laughs> Me making you know, no like sense. I remember one time <clears throat> when we was doing the radio show together, we was doing a broadcast together, you said, and it hit me off guard because people really don't understand where you're coming from sometimes because you're deep, you know? And I'm with you, and that's why a lot of time, you know, Robin and Batman, we there for one another. But the reality, you said, you, you said when um when COVID hit, Jay, this a pandemic, and man, I was in with the world too. <laughs> so you said, you said a pandemic, and you got mad yeah. at the audience, like basically, man, say you know, and, and, and the reality was we was in a pandemic. You say pandemic, it's a pandemic. Man, a poverty is a pom- de- pandemic. <laughs> so we've been in a pandemic before, and you just you just w- went off. And you say we've been in the we went in the pan, we was in the pandemic before the pandemic. Say, <laughs> say, say, where we at now is the pandemic. <laughs> so, so that was so yeah. that was so profound and divine at the same time. So I'm, I'm here to, to, to give you revelation on on what I know is that yeah. we're polluting the earth ourselves yes. from what we're given. We're given a lot of toxic things to the atmosphere, uh, and, and attributing attributing to 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 high crime rates, prostitution, gang. Um, and everything that you can because and your health ties into that. Exactly. The way you eat ties into that. Everything. So we are polluting. What you consume. We polluting ourselves. Yes. We polluting one another. Yes. So with the, what do you think these people have respect? If you don't have respect for 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 for, for me and you, we don't have respect for, for one another. Environment. You think you have respect for the environment? Why do you think a lot of cancer run? <laughs> they drop a lot of nuclear waste in Bahamian waters, and they're telling you this now. Millions this is, of tons. Uh, millions they do, of tons they of nuclear take waste. The, corp- the companies they do they do they do tons and tons of this. Blue but, the fish. But you know now nah, now nah, now nah, you know we like to talk with inner city. So yeah. I like to tie things together and it all come together to make sense. The reality is, we're dropping a lot of waste in our face right now. Yeah. The way you dress, your language, yeah. your character, all this. And everything speaks to pollution, and we're polluting. We're polluting one another with toxic mentalities. And and now, the mur- remember we just always say the murder count is a part of our culture. And, and yeah. you know, some people they live in a I guess they live in a different world. Yeah. I mean, in the Bahamas, because the reality is that's what we made it because we pay attention to it. 
We pay too much attention and we highlight it. And then we allow these guys to walk on ZNS television and, and actually have a red carpet. And then our politicians, we do the same with them. We give them a red carpet. They don't do a good job. We give them a red carpet. Mm. Society, bankers, um, um, white collar crime and all this stuff you've been covering over the years. So, you know, it, it's still a matter of fact that life haven't finished with washing up yet. You yeah. know, life still have a lot of laundry and load to, to wash. But I put it like this. Let's deal with let's deal with us. Let's deal with you. You deal with yourself and eventually you can deal with the smaller things yes. that God gave you to, to, to take care of. Yeah, and closing, I want to say this again. Good honorable Prime Minister, you're traveling to the summit. Uh, right now, the UN, is, UN United Nations are kind of undecided because they're having problems negotiating on the issues surrounding the war in Ukraine uh, and Russia. So they, 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 they want to work on the global, they want to focus on climate change and global warming, but they're distracted right now. So it leaves us as activists to reach our politicians, like the, the, the late great Sir David was saying. Let's advocate, you know, we have to advocate to the Prime Minister of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Since you're talking on climate change, right? Digging for oil is one of the biggest climate uh, change uh, disasters that possibly could happen in mankind now, especially when we get the sun, when we could go to solar, and then we could build turbines, okay? So we don't need to have fossil fuel. Fossil fuel in turn uh, goes in the car, diesel, gas, and that goes up in the air. People were wondering what happened when the COVID-19 outbreak in, uh, in China. The reason it really spread, because the atmosphere of the pollution in China, okay? The atmosphere, that's why the virus was, was able to spread so much in China. That's what people don't understand, because the atmosphere was polluted of all the cars and et cetera and et cetera in China. Notice when they uh, put the restriction on and no cars were allowed to ride and people were, 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 were put on lockdown. You saw the, the, the skies clap in China for the first time. They said that was the first time after the COVID-19 that the skies of China cleared up because of the restrictions. And that, that's the first time people were breathing good oxygen. And yet still, they are not doing the right thing as to bring down their emission. You understand? Mm -hmm. So I just want to say that. And that's my two cents. So I'm saying to the prime minister of the country, we don't need no more oil drilling in this country. Let's protect the mangroves. Let's protect the lands where the trees are. That's why I'm not for people cutting down the trees and national properties for coal. Let's get rid of coal. We don't need no one chopping down our pine trees and our, tre our trees to produce coal. That's a no-no. Let's get rid of that. And let's get rid of this, this big issue of digging for oil. And let's try to go to alternative measures like turbines and, and solar and et cetera. Now let me get to my guest here in the studios. I have a wonderful guest. Uh, she's traveling to the U.S., but we want to play a flick and let her speak for herself uh, before we get her to introduce herself. Shawana Moore, and I'm going to complete a presentation on utilizing nurse mentorship education to support healthy growth of adolescent females. So I have no conflicts of interest in relation to this presentation. I always like to disclose that I am the mother of this lovely little boy. So the objectives of this presentation are as follows. You'll be able to understand the importance of nurse mentorship for adolescent females. You'll be able to explore one example of a nurse-led mentorship program for adolescent females. And you'll be able to identify key components of a nurse mentorship program for adolescent females. The purpose of this specific presentation is to disseminate the importance of nurse mentorship and education in supporting the healthy growth of adolescent females. So some background information about this topic area. So education is really an important part of overall health. It serves as a protective factor related to health issues. It is linked to a higher level of education among individuals are more likely to have better outcomes when compared to those who have lower education levels. So we see connection here. When we look at education as the center of it, we know that education can impact economics, it impacts health behaviors, social, physiologically, it has an impact and it can impact healthcare access pathways. So why does it matter? So we know that the first five years from infancy to kindergarten can truly impact the individual both physically, mentally, as well as socially and their ability to learn. So 
currently within a Philadelphia area, nearly one in two school children start kindergarten behind their peers, and 44% of third graders are not reading at their grade level. We also know that low-income parents are typically unable to provide um, funding towards extracurricular enrichment programs that could be um, empowerment programs, STEM-based education, and this further widens the gap of achievement, and particularly when it comes to performance in math and science. And also because of this, the trend tends to continue with middle school and junior high school, and it affects high school graduation rates. So how does this impact adolescent females specifically? We know that adolescent females are a vulnerable population. They're at risk for sexually transmitted infections, substance abuse, suicide. They have higher rates, higher rates of eating disorders, and they suffer from higher rates of depression when compared to their male counterparts. So what can we do about this? How can we help contribute to change in, this, in these areas? Um, so I developed a girls empowerment program um, to help uh, promote self-awareness among underserved adolescent females within the greater Philadelphia metropolitan area. The research question for this specific program focused on, does the female adolescent mentoring program impact confidence and self-concept within teenage females? Activities emphasize and develop uh, around six core values, which includes creativity, confidence, self-esteem, leadership, health, mentoring, and education. Each participant was paired or assigned to a graduate women's health gender related nurse practitioner student at Jefferson College of Nursing throughout their duration in the program. iPad technology was utilized to deliver the sessions as well as the form of communication tool between a mentor and mentee, which occurred on a weekly basis via text, email, video, or audio. And their mentor um, communication time really focused on the weekly themes. Uh, mentor and mentees were matched using a uh, brief like background information. So we pair individuals that we thought would have a good um, mentorship relationship. Okay, that's just a little brief introduction uh, that we played just now. Uh, Miss Moss in studios now, and let me get a little bit of the background. So you live in you live in the United States of America. Yes. Uh, you, you reside in, uh, uh, what do you say, New York? Atlanta. Atlanta, excuse me. Yeah, but I'm from the East Coast, so originally from the Philadelphia, New Jersey area. Okay, excellent. Yeah. And your field? Yes, yeah, so I am a women's health nurse practitioner by training. Um, so all of my education has been in nursing. I have a bachelor's degree in biology, however, mm -hmm. a bachelor's degree in nursing, a master's degree in nursing, and then a doctoral degree in nursing, as well wow. as a PhD um, in nursing as well. Wow. So... Yeah, girls empowerment uh, mentorship program. Why, why, why girls empowerment mentorship? Why, why girls? Yeah, so that really hits to the core of who I am. I grew up in the inner city uh, in New Jersey called Camden, New Jersey, a very poor, impoverished city. Um, probably in maybe at least ten to fifteen years ago, was considered one of the poorest cities in the U.S. Atlanta. Um, no, in Camden, New Jersey. Okay. Yeah, wow. so I come from those backgrounds, and I understand. Um, what mentorship did for me early on. So I had the opportunity to participate in some enrichment programs that were offered by like local universities, one being Rutgers University, that really focused on getting girls um, into STEM education, so like science and math. So I was a nerd. Mm -hmm. So I was very smart, right? So I was able to um, use my smarts to kind of get access to programs, right? People kind of take a look at you like, hey, you, you seem smart. This is a program you may want to be interested in. So again, my goal was always to give back to communities I came from just because I know what such programs have done for me. So I wanted to design my own program to be able to give back to communities. Wow. So why, why are you visiting Nassau, Bahamas, along with your friend, Nate the Great? Why are you here in the Bahamas? What, yeah, what? so I think it's by divine. I actually traveled here in September for a friend's birthday, and we were out and about, and we met Mr. McKinney. And... Had a conversation and learned about his passion and his nonprofit, uh, Dream Chasers for At Risk Youth. And I'm like, hmm. Similar. I, yes. I'm like, we, we have a similar passion. So I'm like, this has to be divine. Like, you don't just meet somebody that has a similar interest. Yeah, and happens, again, I've been, reason. absolutely, I've been trying to get the program in Jamaica for some time wow. now. Um, some things fell through just because it's on university, university. But 
I'm like, God put me directly to the person that I can talk to who get, can give me a yes or no. And he said yes. So I'm just like, okay, let's make this happen. Um, so, yeah, we are going to launch the first cohort for the Girls Empowerment Program in partnership with Dream Chaser at Risk Youth um, this January, right after the holidays for one week. Um, I'll be here on site to facilitate facilitate the program with Mr. McKinney. Um, we're working on having some great funding um, for the program. We already have pretty much all of the resources, so like the iPads, all of like the uh, products and materials that the young ladies will receive. Um, so working on getting some additional funding just to be able to make sure it's a truly um, exemplar program because my goal is to really have it sustainable within his organization and something that he can offer at least three times a year. Three times a year. Yeah. So tell us a little bit, what, what, what would be a part of the adolescent training? Sure. So we focus on six core values. One is creativity. The second one focuses on leadership. The third one focuses on mentorship. Um, the fourth one focuses on health. Fifth one is self-esteem and self-confidence. And the final one is leadership. Let's talk about the health part. Sure. And then we can talk about the self-esteem because these two tie in. I like these two. Tell us about why it's so important about the health part of it for adolescents, young ladies. Yeah, so the health of adolescents, girls are really critical early on. And education is, is key. And I know it varies. I know in the U.S. from state to state, which you can and can't teach to school-based children when it comes to their overall health. Mm. But essentially, the education focuses on a lot with menstrual hygiene. Hygiene means mm -hmm. your armpit, and Your armpit and, and your, your period. So yes. those conversations sometimes aren't held within households okay. or within school systems. So we provide curriculum um, that is evidence-based and allows young ladies to understand what that means, right? And we provide resources. So we have big menstrual kits that gives at least three-month supply of wow. menstrual products. And my hope is that it will be something that's sustainable, where they can go straight to Gene Chasers to pick up their menstrual products. It's just freely accessible. So I'm hoping that's something that we'll be able to get a lots of funding for. I have a community partner in Philadelphia that opened up the first menstrual hub internationally. So we have some synergies there, but that's my hope. But we provide a lot of education on um, menstrual hygiene, overall hygiene, prevention of um, early sexual debut, so early onset of sexual intercourse, right? The biggest thing is prevention. Mm -hmm. So... We talk about that. We talk about the importance of um, not engaging in um, at-risk behavior in terms of engaging with groups of people that may not do so good things, right? So that can place you at risk for substance use disorder, right? So mm -hmm. drinking early, right? Maybe using marijuana early, right? Mm -hmm. So we try to have protective factors so young ladies can understand what are the long-term effects of these, right? And it, although it may seem cool and this is the thing to do, we try to prevent that from happening with education, right? Um, the other thing is because this young ladies who go through the program, they will be paired with advanced practice nursing students in the U.S. that will mm -hmm. serve as their one-on-one -on -one mentors. Um, the mentors are able to reinforce the curriculum that they learn throughout the week-long program. And my hope is that even though the program only lasts for a week, that they can keep these mentors throughout their lifetime, right? I'm like, we've all had some sort of mentorship throughout our life, and people come and go, but I've had mentors that have been around for at least 20 years. So my wow. hope is that it can be something that's sustainable, over time, and they can have lifelong mentorships. It's very important because I always talk about, we always talk about the males, the males, the males, the males. You know, the females have gone over the character now, so it's good that programs like this could teach them how to be feminine again, you know. Sure. Because when you're talking about hygiene, you know, uh, when you're talking about the menstrual, uh, there's complications happen differently to different women when that uh, period comes on. Yeah. So you teach them about the different aspects of that also and how to take care of themselves and then if you feel the cramp or et cetera. So you, you guys are going to do the full nine yards. Absolutely. Yard. And we provide some remedies. So like there's some tea you can take when you have the menstrual cramps. Some mm -hmm. um, menstrual products that are really geared towards um, helping with cramps. So they have like natural um, aloe in there, cucumber, lavender that can help soothe uh, a, a woman who's having her menstruation and having cramps. Talk about that and we try to normalize the conversation. Um, and the other thing I want to say just about menstrual, right, and, and um, periods, I think the other thing is menstrual inequity, right? So Menstrual inequity. Inequity. Mm -hmm. What's that? What's that? Like? Yeah. That's a big word. It menstrual. Is. So where I come from, individual, there's disparities, right, in terms of every person who's menstruated doesn't have access to the same menstrual product. Okay. So we have young ladies who won't go to school because they're menstruating. Okay. We have young ladies who will use socks, newspaper. Oh, wow. Products. That, that is very harmful. Absolutely. Yes. 
But the biggest thing is they don't have a choice. I understand. I right? understand. So Quality. how do we exactly? Yes. So how do we yeah, change that? So again, Pro- programs like this, exactly, and come to a local organization inside the city with Dream Chasers partnership in. exactly, and then we have the connection from the U.S. Exactly. to you, and then Nate, and then the community myself. Yes, exactly, and the biggest thing is that it's sustainable. So like, I never want to yeah. go into a community and say, okay, then here's the program. This is a one-off. Boop, boop, and go about my way. No, it's about sustainability and, and program. So the great thing about this program is it doesn't cost a lot of money to run. Mm. And I made sure I designed it that way. Wow. Because when I leave communities, I want to make sure they still can run the program, even if I'm not in place, right? And they can run it with minimum resources. So I think that's the other thing is when you are implementing programs and creating partnerships with organizations that you truly ensure that it's a sustainable program, that even if you weren't in that place, that that organization can continue to run that program so it's sustainable. And it really impacts communities, right? I'm like, one-offs, they do, it's great, but having something where generations of young ladies can go through, I mean, that's where you get the biggest change and biggest impact. Yeah, and they could use that they leadership. Call them type of program, we refer to as call them step five, because they, they come around every now and then. Yeah. You understand? They baby daddy pro, um, programs. So... You're only available when they get funding for one particular project or program once a year, and then me and school is stuck with these lucky kids <laughs> throughout the entire year, yeah. year after year, year after year. And and I told him one time he had his kid, and I said, "School, let's fly down to meet your, your son BJ." School said, "Man, I ain't got time." I said, "I said to him, and and he got upset on air." I said, we love these children more than we love our own children. It took him like two months later to say, but we don't lie, no. Because <laughs> I don't have time for my own son. But but if you check School G House, early in the morning, this is the, you, you, it brings tears to the eye. Non-stop, non-stop. I talk them for the simplest of product, products that they come Every for. Day. Sugar, dollar, 25 cents. Um, you know, and... Um, you know, just being a father to the community, that goes off to Valentino Brown. You too, my brother. Like maintaining that, cause I, 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 I have restrictions. You know? That's some help for some people. I have restrictions. You, I, you have to come to the program to get some of the resources. You can't just. That's a shortcut. I, yeah, you can't <laughs> just try to yes. try to come around me, cause um, Scoochie, Scoochie always thought like I was super tough sometimes, but you realize like working together, there's always. It's always protocol. The kingdom of God are protocol. For our kids in the community, they feel privileged when they help us. And I and I thank God for allowing us to be in their life. Wow, yeah. awesome. It's amazing. Uh, uh, I want to get on this point. Uh, depression. When you say depression, you know, you talk about a lot of different components uh, to your program. But mm-hmm. you're also talking about the, the, the difficulties of the individual. You know, you're talking about the menstrual cycle. You're talking about the health you know, you know, you also talking about empowerment. So what about the depression? When you say depression, what do you mean depression? Yeah, so based on the data. Um, and this based is, on data. Yeah, yes, and yes. this is globally. Globally. Yeah. All we, are, the, this is statistically around the world. Around okay, the world. Okay, let's go with this. Mm-hmm. Adolescent females have higher incidence of mental health disorders. And uh, oh, yeah. so, Could you hold that one second? Sure. You hear what this lady just said? We have a mental health issue. Now... She has given statistics that is being analyzed around the world, various countries, and this is statistics they came come up with. Could you repeat that one more time? For sure. Me? So globally, um, around the world, we know that adolescent females have higher incidence of mental health disorders, and the two I want to just kind of focus on, and this is based on the World Health Organization. So who? Um, men- uh, the mental health disorders are depression and anxiety. So they suffer disproportionately. Um, higher rates when compared to our male counterparts. And again, I think adolescence is a, is a really critical age where things are changing, right? Menstruation start, hormones change, you have peer pressure occurring, you may have socioeconomic factors that can be impacting your growth and development. So all those things, I think, play a key into that statistics. So my hope is that this program helps decrease rates of Mm-hmm. Um, mental health disorder, it hasn't been proven to do do so. However, I do use a validated tool for research in this yes. program. It's called uh, Hatter's uh, Adolescent uh, Profile, where it measures nine domains. Um, nine domains. Yes, nine domains. And those domains, the ones I, I measure all of them. But it's been shown that individuals who participate in a program have increased. And one of the biggest things is in self-esteem 
your self-esteem build back up. Because you're assisting them uh, empowerment, you're assisting them with their health, you're teaching them what to do, and, and, and more of like a, 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 someone to look up to. Exactly. And we know that, well, I shouldn't say we know. The literature tells us that adolescent females who have lower rates of self-esteem tend to um, engage in riskier Sexual behaviors, yes. Sexual intercourse. Sexual intercourse. So this leads issues. to them making unwise choices. Exactly. And they have higher rates of depression and anxiety. And I want to be They have sensitive. higher depression yes. and anxiety, anxiety more than the males. Sure. And Abs- the, yes, that's true. I just, oh, boy, Nate, I'm glad you bring this lady in. <laughs> you know, the males, we, we, we tend to have like, we had 100 murders this year, right? And then in between there, we had a few females who was involved in uh, murders around the country. So even though the females have not created that much criminal activities, but mm-hmm. by your statistics, you were saying that they are more depressed than those males who are out there. Wow, it's crazy. Yes, so they have higher rates of it. Wow, it, that's crazy. Mm-hmm. Like I was be, I was being saying this. I hadn't I didn't have no statistics, but just by me hanging around in, in the neighborhoods, we saw the girls out there getting so rough and tough in the neighborhood and we, we we noticed this. Okay. And me and Nate noticed this, but remember you're saying it to the general public, like sure. people wouldn't understand you. Now I'm glad that you are a trained professional and you have the statistics. But where are far were you saying that our ladies are at risk more than the males in this country? Yeah, so the it? population. Oh, and Hennessy straight up. Well, so it's a population that um, I think has not been a focus of a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's important for primary prevention programs to be put in place to help reduce risk for certain negative health outcomes. Well, negative health outcomes. So let me ask you a question. So these ladies who are, who are depressed and have their health issues and they, they have that anxiety uh, problem, mm-hmm. just, just say if they were to get pregnant at an early age, do you think this transmits to the kid or this is going to have a, 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 is it going to make a difference on how the child perform? Or, you, you understand sure, what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah, so I understand completely. The other thing I would like, just want to say in Go general. Go ahead, my back. No, no, this is perfect. So mental health disorders normalize the conversation around it, right? Mm-hmm. A, a lot of mental health disorders are genetic, right? So genetic if, means it's yeah, passed on. Yeah, exactly. So if you, you, that, have, it's a, pass on. Mm-hmm, if you okay. have a family history of mental health disorders, and they ask women when they go in for um, pregnancy care, what um, family disorders do you have? And mental health is something we ask. So as a woman's health MP, I care for the birthing population, mm. right? And that's the question that I ask because, again, the literature shows us that when you have a significant family history of mental health disorders, mm-hmm. you may be at greater risk of not only yourself, wow. but even birthing the child that has a mental health disorder. Wow. So, yeah, it could play, place the um, unborn child for, for at risk for mental health disorders. Because you said it's passed on from the genes. It could, absolutely. Mental so health know, disorders then, are so just, inherited. Like, just like hypertension, diabetes, how, yeah, right? It's, it's the same it's thing no, with mental no, health. Oh, right, right. Mm-hmm. Wow, that's, that's crazy. So you aim to... Let me, just, let, me, let me talk with you in power one now because, see, you, you knock all the components. You're talking about health. You're talking about all the stuff. But now you, you're talking empowerment. Yeah. But you're adding empowerment to this, too. I let had me, to me. add empowerment to it. And I play with that word a lot because I think, so in my role as the facilitator and founder of the program. Who's that? So in my role as the facilitator yes. and the founder of the yes. program. I don't say I empower people. I look at myself as somebody who amplifies the voices of communities of people, right? Mm -hmm. People empower themselves. I like that. Yeah, because that's how it's like, I don't give you power. You have your own power. You have to recognize that you empower yourself. Take the opportunity that I'm presenting to you. Yes. Yes. So it's them. They empower themselves, right? Save yourself. Exactly. And this program helps give you resources and tools to be able to do so confidently. Um, So I don't look at myself as the savior, right? Mm. These individuals who are going to participate in a program they have talents, right? Um, they have attributes. They have characteristics that can help them be successful young women, right? Mm-hmm. How do we allow them to see that, right, and help grow that and amplify that so they see that within themselves and grow out there to be productive individuals and do exceptional things in their lives? Wow. 
except for the things like what you're doing. Tell us your bar garden again. Let me hear all yeah. those diploma you got. Listen, let me hear yeah. all those diploma you got so the I, position you hold. Go sure. Ahead. So I'm an associate professor yes. at Emory University. That's in Atlanta, Georgia. It's the number two nursing program in the U.S. Number two? Number wow. two in the U.S. And I direct their doctor of nursing practice, which is the number six uh, doctoral program in the U.S. So the school is ranked number two nationally, and then the program I direct is number six. So very... High level school, exceptional people within that that um, specific institution. I also serve as the president of the National Association of Nurse Practitioners and Women's Health. I'm the first woman of color, color so the first African American woman to hold this position in the awesome. um, organization's 42 year history. So it's wow. been around for a while, and I'm the first Black woman to sit in this role. Um, great position. I've been able to do some really exceptional things, especially around like equity. That's my passion, um, ensuring that things are done within the lens of equity. equity. Um, yeah, that's important. I'm like equity and all that we do because without that, there's people don't get what they need out mm-hmm. of healthcare, right? Out of education, out of policy, um, and out of research. So I always try to lead with all things equity. And if you're not looking at it through that lens, how can I help you rethink it? Wow, that's amazing. So. How did you get to our beautiful Nassau, Bahamas? Yeah, so honestly, I came out here in September for a friend's birthday, okay. and we came to celebrate her birthday. Um, she's actually from St. Kazanivas. Her name is Chanel. What's that? St. Kazanivas. St. Kazanivas. Where's that? Yeah, that's, that's where she's from. Sinkers it's the Caribbean name. island. I know, yeah, but I You never heard of St. Kitts? St. Kitts. Yes, St. Kitts. St. Kitts. <laughs> yes, okay. And Nevis. Okay, 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 yeah. yes. I heard about it. She's from yes. Nevis. She told me to give her a shout out. Chanel okay. Claxton and shouting you out, Nelly. Yeah, okay, that's excellent. <laughs> now give her a shout out. Yes, that's excellent. Yeah. She's from Nevis, so we came to celebrate her birthday. And um, that's what brought us to Bahamas. But I like to say God brought us to Bahamas because so much more came out of it. I got to meet Nate the Great. Um, uh, Nate the Great. Yeah, I got to meet He's Nate the Great. Guy. He is a good guy. I ran into him and then he said, I said, um, who are you? He was like, I'm Nate. I said, oh, Nate the Great. This is before I knew they called him Nate the Great. I said, he said, yeah, I'm Nate the Great. I was like, he said, you Googled me. And I'm like, Googled you? Why would I Google you? It just rhymed. Yeah, I just Common said sense. it. Exactly. He ain't too smart. He ain't catch on. He ain't too smart. Yeah, so he said, you Googled me. I'm like, no, I ain't Googled you. He said, I said, who are you? He said, I'm nobody. I said, oh, no, you're somebody. And uh-huh. I said, everybody's somebody, right? Yes. But we had this, like, very natural conversation and engagement and led to us learning about his organization and me sharing about the program I started and then figuring out ways we can can collaborate. And we figured it out, and I'm excited. This uh, program up and launch uh, within his uh, nonprofit organization. Uh, you have no, listen, you don't have to worry about that. Uh, trust me, you're in good hands. And then I know he's going to give me a little something, something to do, so uh, you're in good hands. Uh, I think that we need that in the inner city community. We need it in the Bahamas as a whole. And, you know, the program can be very, very uh, beneficial to us here in the country because you're talking the stuff and having the program that we need to have mm-hmm. in the country and the discussion we need to have. And, and the thing is, you have a, you have a uh, adolescence, a female, substance abuse, depression, empowerment, you know, and you're talking about all these, these important stuff that some of these females today don't get that from their pairs like their mom sure. or their grandmother because some of them could come with sing, single homes and sure. and, and they probably their pairs don't even have the, the finance you know and you said that you said earlier that you know it's going to be sustainable so when you say sustainable that means once the program starts here in Arsenal Providence you're going to be able to keep it sustained through the cost and as it grows it's going to st- st- Absolutely. The only way I go away is Nick if he he kicks me off the team. <laughs> no, no, can't. Not, <laughs> not, 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 not something so, uh, so important, uh, especially the program. Because see, in the country, we have to focus on prevention. Yeah, that's important. Measure. Primary prevention. But what's what's so divine when you talk about sustainability? It was actually when I was in Dubai for the five months. I you want in, someone to know you've been in Dubai? <laughs> yeah, you know that. You have to express. <laughs> yeah, you, right? large. you know your value yeah, go up, no, your know. value go up. So you have to put yeah, that on yeah, the airwaves yeah. now. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. You think we're still in what? the bottom? Sure, three, three months. We didn't grow. Three months. Three months. <laughs> yeah, they had five months. Five there. months. Yeah. Man. So, so I, I, no, I'm saying it's so divine, you know, um, that I was in the sustainability market. Yeah. So I was actually promoting 
and selling the Bahamas in the sustainability yeah. market. So, you did wonderful. So you when did, you, you thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah. But when you say sustainability, it, it does it does take yeah. me back down to the sustainability district. And what's so important is that not only when you start to see, and this is divine also in every way. And I, like I say, God, God have His way. I, I, I'm telling you, no, no kidding. For you to actually talk about the planet, if you check Germany and some of these other wealthy countries, they're cleaning up. What they are doing it's, to their environment yes. in terms of to, to have it what was already done in terms of the energy system, the renewal this, they're the trying. plan this. I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about some things, bro, yeah, that electric. I never saw in, in, in my life. Even, I mean, it, 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 matter of fact, Dubai take the salt water and turn it into fresh water because they don't have water. So all their salt water, they have salt plants, salt water plants that they use for fresh water. Yeah. So it's so much things at the end of the day when it comes to sustainability, so we can sustain it. Yeah, uh, it'll be sustainable unless yeah. it gets rid of me. We had <laughs> a few people calling in. Uh, I, I guess they want to... Congratulate this wonderful lady. Other than that, we're gonna take this call and see what they have to say. Go ahead, caller, because we really want this. We really want to get the information out to out of you so that we can pass this on for the inner city and those who live in the Commonwealth. Bama. Go ahead, caller, you're on it inside the inner city. Hi, good evening. How are you? Uh, we're fine. Great stuff, man. Uh, enjoying the conversation tonight. Uh, really enlightening. I'm driving. I'm gonna pull over right now. So please pardon me. But no I problem. Need, I, no problem. It's imperative that I call in, man. Go ahead, sir. So, um, I want to also say good evening to your guest. Good evening. And um, I think it takes a community, man, and that's what you guys are hinting at. And to be able to help persons, organizations, and uh, uh, really be able to support them in terms of giving them the, the appropriate tools, yes. resources, et cetera. Yes, sir. I think that is what the good lady is there, and that's what she, that is what she brings to the table. Pardon me. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so I would like to connect... Um, I'd like for your producer, if you can, to take my number off. off see, there. I, see, I think it's a uh, I'm, I'm very much desirous of putting a program in place oh, that saying. impacts our youth and, and all of the positive uh, bosses that you would have checked. I love the examples of the different, what I would uh, describe as modules, yeah. you know, the different uh, segments that you, know, you can impact lives and change people's perspectives and yes. help them to understand. Mm -hmm. You know, we are so impacted as a society by uh, these instances of, um, you, you talked about... Um, depression and so on, right? Mm -hmm. and so I, I really and truly want to be able to uh, 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 make an impact, and I want to start something like this. And I think <laughs> I awesome. you are the person, you are the conduit, <laughs> you are the one uh, that uh, your organization and yourself yes. can I, really help someone like myself in terms of the resources. Excellent, excellent. I appreciate that. I think that's fantastic, and I think that's what it's all about. Um, it takes yeah. a village, right? Yes, so, it takes a village. Yeah. Yep. I'm happy to connect and, and support in any way, and... I can leave my information. Yes, definitely. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, you Fantastic. can leave your name and number at the producer caller. And as soon as the show finish, uh, she will receive it. And Nate would also have it too. And then you guys can connect. That's what we do on, right. on Guardian and, Radio. And there's another there's Go another, ahead. Uh, another point I just want to make. Really Go ahead, sir. And I'll, I'll hang up and listen to you folks. Thank you all so much for sharing the information tonight, by the way. Have but fun. I think pleasure. in this country, in our particular happenstance, we need a revolution in this country, man. Mm. Right? There are some things that really, really need to be fixed. And it starts with our young people. They are the future. And also, again, I'm so thankful and delighted to hear you guys' this conversation tonight. And I look forward to being able to connect with your good lady there in studio. Mm -hmm. I didn't get the name, pardon me, but I just heard a little segment of what you guys were talking yes. about tonight. She's going to give her a name. You can say her name one more sure. time. Sure. So my, name, my, my formal name is Dr. Shawana Moore, but I go by Shawana. Shawana. Yes. <laughs> it's a pleasure, Mom. It's a pleasure as well to meet you. Thank you for calling in. Thank you ever so much. Have a good night. You okay. Too. You can stay online and the producer will get your number and your information Brilliant. and then you'll share it. Thank you very much for calling. Thank you did a wonderful job. And we're here. Uh, when this uh, platform was given to me on Guardian Radio, they told me they wanted to find the inside stuff and find solutions uh, for the country's problem. And what we do here is we do that and we provide the platform. Nate goes only bring these wonderful people in. I bring pe wonderful people in from around the country. And Combined together with the information given, or we reach other people, and you see the connection. And like you say, uh, everything happens for a reason. Mm -hmm. uh, Nate met her. Mm -hmm. Now she's here in the studio now. The gentleman who was listening to the show, he wants to be a part of, and he wants to start a program like that. And that's when we reach one, teach one. Yeah. You know, and you know that's that's very important. What we need to keep on doing in this country and in the world at at hand to make a difference. We have one more caller. We're gonna take this last call. Go ahead, caller. You're on inside in the city. Oh, they left? Okay. So where we were at? 
You're okay. Talking about connecting minds, eh? Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you're also going to teach you you you're going to teach nursing. Yeah. So Tell I. Tell us about that. Yeah. So I think the other key component of the program is. So I don't know the stats nas- uh, internationally, but nationally within the U.S., um, there's a lack of diversity within the nursing workforce and in the healthcare workforce in general, right? Uh-huh. So I want to use this program to provide a platform to give education on career pathways within the health industry. Career pathways. Mm-hmm. Specifically looking at nursing, right? The more diversified this profession is, the better health outcomes, and that's supported by data. Right, we know that when somebody looks like somebody, when somebody comes from that same culture, mm-hmm. the care they receive is much better as well as their health outcomes. Wow. So I'm hoping, it, well, I have, I utilize the program to provide information on career pathways within healthcare, but I don't limit it to that, right? Because every individual who comes in may not have a healthcare interest, right? But we do provide that education on nursing specifically as well as other healthcare professions. Um, but my hope is that individuals who go through the program do consider a profession in nursing in the future. And some of the profession in nursing, like we talk about the tourism industry, right? Mm-hmm. But people don't know that behemoths, uh, we are not even top in the tourism industry because we, there are so many, there, there's, there's a, uh, what you call, there's a toss, there's a, what you call, what you call jet ski, you know, riding oh, jet ski, uh, A, B, and B, uh, selling uh, authentic behemoth artifacts. Is, is uh, restaurants. It's so many different uh, components to tourism that we have not even hit the nail on it. So what I'm saying is, uh, in the nursing field, mm-hmm. how many different character? Like just say, if I'm, I'm a nurse, right? They, what can they, you they, do? Yeah. What can oh, you do? Oh, that's the diversity of the profession. Oh, you can do so much. So no, give us a little, little quick. Example. Yeah, I'll give you a quick overview. So you can work in an inpatient, like so hospital. Those are typically what you say traditional roles. Mm-hmm. You can be in ambulatory, so those are outpatient practices. Um, People go into education. Um, Some people may go into research or policy. When you think about specialty areas, they Uh can specialize in neonatal care, so care of small babies. Care of small babies. Mm -hmm. Mm. Usually within a hospital setting for neonatal. Um, Pediatrics, Pediatrics. I heard about pediatrics. Yeah, so women's health and gender related. So usually um, uh, well-person care, so women coming for cervical cancer screenings. Uh, ma- uh, mammograms, mm-hmm. as well as gynecological disorder treatments. Um, adult primary, meaning outpatient people coming in for um, maybe chronic conditions. Treat, uh, diabetes, yeah, high hypertension, blood pressure, exactly. hypertension. Mm-hmm. You could be in acute care setting, so usually that's more so hospital-based, so like ICUs mm-hmm. for um, patients who may have critical conditions. Um, mental health. It's another that. area. Mm-hmm. All this is a part of nursing. All this is a part of nursing. You see the field? Like, there's yeah. so many different you can fields. Do home, home care. Home care, I mean, home. Mm-hmm. Wound care. So, individuals who have wounds, you have um, nurses specialize in providing wound care and have certification that allows them to do so. Um, rehab, so rehabilitation, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. both physically as well as, um, I think, by substance use disorders within like uh, inpatient or outpatient treatment areas. Um, case management. Um, there are so many roles for nurses. I'm like, you're not limited to one to one place or one setting, and I think that's the beauty of it. If you want to, if I picked up tomorrow and say, listen, I'm done with woman self. I may want to go into peds. I can do that. You can do that. I could do that. Um, so you have options, even though when you're in this field, you have options because you still could always keep on studying and getting. A you can, mm-hmm. and then so when you're at the RN level, the beauty of that is typically you don't need specialized certification. Mm-hmm. Usually you get trained on a job. When you become an advanced practice nurse, right, you'll have to go back to get a cert- certification. Mm-hmm. But I think there's diversity in that. So, like, I'm in women's health, gender-related health care, right, and I work at an outpatient OBGYN where we see obstetric patients as well as obstetric gynecology person. patients. Mm-hmm. That means you're dealing with babies? So pregnant women or yes. birthing people? I had a gynecologist. That's mm-hmm. our prime minister, former prime minister, gynecologist. Oh, fantastic. And um, so if I wanted to go to do maybe like infertility, so to help people get pregnant, I can go into infertility. You make people, teach people how to get pregnant. So don't not teach them, but a system. A system. Exactly. Excellent. Let mm-hmm. me get like private. Yeah. I get access. Yeah. Oh, how are you going to help them? Let me get this now. Oh, so it's IVF treatment uh-huh. that they go through. Mm-hmm. It's a treatment. Yeah. It's, uh-huh. It can be a lot, though. So, but or you can go into some other areas like gynecological cancer, so mm-hmm. GYN oncology. Mm-hmm. Um, you can go into high risk pregnancy, so MFM, maternal fetal medicine. 
Um, and you, I wouldn't need to go back to school for that, right? But if I wanted to go be a pediatric nurse practitioner, I would have to go get a, a certificate to become that. You you don't believe say, I don't have an idea what you're talking about, but I have a <laughs> <laughs> But I understand everything so, you said. I understand. You are, I'm only joking. You're OGGYN. <laughs> oh, it's so I'm a WHMP board certified. Yes. So the difference is, so I am a nurse practitioner by training. I don't know here in the Bahamas if we if nurse practitioners or advanced practice nurses. That's or, a practitioner. When they say practitioner, I, I have an understanding what practitioner for the or listening audience. What is what is a learning practitioner? Yeah, so how can I say You're it? You're uh, on the field. So it's, a, it's an advanced practice nurse. So I'm advanced. a registered nurse as well. Kind of could, could, could subscribe medicine. But I so prescribe far. medication. Oh, wow, you're more like getting to the doctor stage. I have a doctor. Oh. I'm not a physician, but okay. I have a doctor. Yeah, you could, you could prescribe. Uh-huh. I have, but, well, you can have a master's and still prescribe. Oh, okay. My doctorate is it's equivalent to an MD. I know what MD. Yes. It's what is equivalent to. It's I a learned practice about Dr. Focus. Sauce, but I used to watch it on, on TV. Yeah, so it's a practice <laughs> focused degree for you know in MD. nursing for uh-huh. advanced practice nurses. Okay. Um, how can I say? I, I'm going to do a nice graphic too uh-huh. to help explain it. Okay. But yeah, so um, I, I always say I'm a nurse practitioner. So I care for people, women in the gender related population throughout their life cycle for all their women's health care needs. Mm. I have that. Legal authority to do so. I prescribe and manage conditions, right? I collaborate with as well. Oh, to see what the problem mm-hmm. is. Yeah, in some states. Diagnose, yep. diagnose the problem if you don't have a clear. And in, in some states, I can practice completely alone where wow. I don't have to collaborate. However, you should never be in silo. You should always collaborate yeah, with it, your yes, colleagues, yes. whether it be a pharmacy, a physical therapist, a physician. That's a backup line. Well, it's important. I'm like, healthcare isn't done by one person, right? It's a team, in, including the patient. Wow. Mm-hmm. So, so you have anything in OBGYN? Yeah, so I care Talking. for obstetric patients as well yeah. as gynecological patients. Yeah. So you would have technically you have a degree in it, or I do. So I have a master's degree, and, and I'm certified as a women's health nurse practitioner. So I took a national exam. I think I think you, you concentrate me. so much on the nurses <laughs> practitioner. I think you just need to label all of your um, credentials <laughs> separately. All of them separate. <laughs> Yeah, because it's a so lot yeah, of pieces. Yeah, yeah but do. then or, or, um, write it separately. I mean, because in the Bahamas, you know, uh, some people are she very took, classism. Very, and and, and, very and, and a conversation can change. All they have to do is say, well, I'm um, <laughs> such and such, right? Like, my conversation is like, hey, yeah, I went such and such, right? <laughs> or you can say, I'm an OBGYN. <laughs> But, so I am I, a doctor in a have, nurse's practitioner. But exactly. separate it. If you separate, separate. it, I okay. think it'll make help. more s- no sense to us you because you, you you have you have a long title because I'm not you saw your title at one of the when you're speaking engagement. I say, what the heck is this? <laughs> I say they, they're trying to figure it out so it was a lot of O O yeah. I think it was O Y O W or something like that. Mm-hmm. And I saw a D, I see a, a D, DMP, DMP mm-hmm. or some, and then I saw this other titles and such. And I was like, what, the, what, the, what's going on? And I was That's like, and and then the thing was, they had a doctor on, and I said, the doctor only had like three pieces. We had like ten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. When they can stop. <laughs> so, so that's the biggest thing. I feel like um, even early on, educating the populate well, the public about degrees, right? So people sometimes only think MDs are like the doctors, and I'm like, no, you could be a doctor of a lot of professions, right? So I think that's the tricky thing with us, is like, we're in healthcare. Because some doctors can't save you. <laughs> Seriously, because you have a doctor's degree, doesn't mean that you could, just, yeah. you know, you deal with medicine. Yeah, it depends on what the doctor <laughs> yeah, is You in, have a doctor right? in anything. Exactly, that's the yeah. biggest thing. I problem. wanted to go get a master's, and I, I actually wanted to be a, a chiropractor at one, at awesome. one point. But I, you know, track and field didn't allow me that space in that room yeah, to compete it. at that level and, and and go to school. And then I, my my final thing, like in 2019, I wanted to go to school to be um, orthopedic, um, you know, an orthopedic occupational oh. occupational therapy. See, so, so and that, that no, moves no, but to the I, 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 I basically, I basically, what what happened was when they started talking about the school, it started to have a scare on me. But I was confident with it. And then COVID came, and a whole lot of stuff came. Oh, so I was going through a transition yeah. stage of just leaving the Bahamas yeah. and and really going into it because working, you know, nine to five. I, I, um, when I look at the degree and what I could do, I could actually make money on telling you how to yeah. sit down in a chair. 
and corporate on a corporate level, you know, mm-hmm. how to position yourself at home and, and certain things. Because you're a so professional much. athlete, so you should, yeah. you should, you so. should get that by experience because mm-hmm. you're traveling the world and seeing those. Uh, yeah. um, but, but what this will get, trainers. this will got me. I'd have to do the two years and then I have to come back again and do the another two years just to get the doc, to, to get the doctor. And I'm like, like, what? I'm like, going fast, Nate. It goes and and, and the thing is, fast. four years from my, my thought process, I would have been a graduate. Yes, time going right fast. Now. You see how fast these Fridays come in? Yeah. Unless, let me ask you a question. Let me ask I was in, a I was in the cruise to, tourism, I was in um, cruise and maritime department yeah. when I was actually leaving and I had a mentor, Carla Stott, was just like motivating me because she has so much degrees. She don't even talk about them. Cause they, you know, she's what? so smart. She just don't talk about. Most them. people with she a lot of law degree, don't. you know. And and I was in, I was inspired by her. And I literally would go by her house and we we have conversations on it. So, um, with with her brilliance, we have a lot of conversations because, like like I told, I said I'm using you, and and uh, and then she looked at me like what? I say, technically I'm using you. You know, I, I you know I save. And the first thing our conversations are about God. So I say, hey, look, I, I you know I live for God, and I and I'm saving myself in a, such a way. So I said, I'm using you because I need what you got. So um, could you we use each other because our programs we always have no choice, benef- we benefit off each other. We, we have benefit, no choice. We, listen, if we don't, we benefit huge off each other. If we don't, because no one, and I don't think no one on this island have done more tournaments than us within a four-year period span. Yeah. We would do six in one year. And I'm talking about we have numbers, and we never promote. We never use <laughs> airwaves. And we have the airwaves, mm. and we never promote. No. If we do, it would be cluster, It would be like, oh, f- like, oh no, it would be too much. But nobody, nobody hardly gives money except for the people within our communities and some of my friends within the corporate world. And, and, we, and we're fine with that, mm-hmm. right? So, But the reality is... We pull from one another. And when I met you, I was like, hey, I got to pull from you. So I started reading a book on vision. And then um, we, we started a book club, by the way. Mm-hmm. We you know, got a, a little book club. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So we have a little book between us. It's personal. That's when you brainstorm. So, with stop them in positive, yeah. do positive. There's uh, so, things just develop. So it's just, like, it's just like pulling, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, then, and this, is where, this is where you got to be yoked with people because you got to pull. And when directions change, it's just, you know, you was a street guy for years. And then you started doing tournaments and everything. But the, the, so fast, we're so fascinated. But with, with Scoogey is that Scoogey was the first, <laughs> first uh, um, N-I-G-G-A um, on, a, on a billboard. Yeah, <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. It was on a poster that on a billboard. Poster. And it wasn't wanted. It was no. like giving you a message. Awesome. And, and it was a highlighted billboard. So when you come from the airport into the fish fry area where all the guests, you will see this fellow with this, this big happy smile. But that's a that's a um, former gangster, right? Yeah. Um, on on a billboard. So all that is yeah. all that is change, you know. All that is like like um, basically. And I, was, and I was on behalf of the minister of national, the then minister of national security, Tommy Tanquest. He mm-hmm. said that he followed me. He feel that I've changed my life and concerned about the country. And he asked me a question. He said, "I want to work with you at the Ministry of National Security." And this is how I gave back, and this is how I was used my influence as a person came from the street, just like what you're doing now with, it, with your program. And when I introduced myself, I told him my background, I told him the time and this is what he told me, the Minister of National Security, he told me, I want to use you as an inspiration to others. And he said, what I want to do with you is I want to promote you around the country and around the world to use you as a poster for the Ministry of National Security. But he said, I got a question to ask you. He said, I truly believe that you change your life around, but I ain't too sure. He said, what if I go and vouch to you, to my boss, which to the prime minister, that was Honorable Hubert Alexander Ingram, the former prime minister who served three times in the country. And I said to him, so just by you sitting down here with me and giving me the opportunity to sit down with you, the second most powerful man, the third most powerful man in the country, and if I could talk to you to make some changes that could help affect the changes in the inner city community when it comes to my own possession, uh, poverty mm-hmm. and crime, but I'd be I'd, I'd be more than honored. And I wouldn't mess up because I know if I mess up, no one ever in this country ever gonna ever again is gonna chance somebody with my kind of background. So I'm yeah. not gonna let you down. I'm gonna be on my best behavior, and, and I was on my best behavior. And then he talked to the prime minister, and they put my poster all about. Even in the U.S., they put the poster. Up, awesome. You know? Yeah. It's fantastic. Yes, but uh, the girls empowerment program is. Most important for us, sharing the combat of the bombers. It's even important in the U.S. But we are the same people. We come yeah. from the same 
walk around, we have poverty over there, we have poverty over here, we have the same issues. And we need all creative minds, mm -hmm. you know, that can actually change the mindset and, and, and change the way we think and to change people's lives. We are more than happy for you to be a part of our beautiful country. And, I, and I'm, I'm going to show you, Nate is the person who is going to even push even more because that is just him. And this is a very educational program, very beneficial program. As I always said, we so focus on the males, mm -hmm. but we're not focused on the females. Yeah. And we need to focus on the females and programs, teaching them healthcare, teaching them depression, teaching them about substance abuse. You know, this is very important. And yeah. then you also can empower them. You know, that, that, that's amazing. Uh, you have any family, friends who probably listen to the show? Would you like to say hi or? Hi, so, too. Uh, um, I don't have anybody specifically. I'm just thankful and honored to be here and wow. to be able to engage with the people of the Bahamas. Um, and looking forward to a long partnership here um, mm -hmm. that one day, when I'm long, far, and gone and transition on to heaven, that the program will still be in existence. Oh, yeah. That, we all know we're going to die. See, real estate people know they're going to die, okay? We are going to die. What you actually saying? She hopes that the program continues to change lives. You see, you have a goal while she's on this earth. That's a bigger purpose. Your purpose is to make an impact on the lives of the less fortunate and to see if you can change those, li those lives. And that's our job as long as you're here. Yeah. You know, that's our job. So uh, we're not finished. Uh, so Ms. Moore, you talk about so many different components about the program. Mm -hmm. And some of the females that you are going to be training, uh, you said the program is going to be one week over here. Yes. Okay, so where is this program going to be here? you have any idea or you all not decided can, yet? Can I speak to her? Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. All right, so um, I introduce her to a few of the, the girls you might be familiar with. Um, Lovey, um, I got Leah involved oh. with the program. Um, Bappy. Bappy is... Um, Papi daughter would be a oh, part Bobby. of it. Papi, Papi from the jungle uh, shop. We're cooking Papi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's my boy. So, boy. so Papi, Papi would be um, his his daughter. So and then I had Becky and um, Leah. The the Leah is a four point oh student. Yes, graduate yes. from Valen Victorian. Um um, Lovey have great potential. Uh, a plan and a desire is to be a nurse. Yeah. So that wow, was a good. Is, oh, yeah. Oh, that wow. was a that was a good oh, um, wow. that was a good yeah. introduction. So with this group of girls, I'm very selective at this point, because if you're looking for sustainability, mm -hmm. um, I'm, not, I'm not disrespecting anyone at all, but we're going to be selective because... You have to. We, 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 at this point, when we have the, 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 the foundation, the foundation must la be laid properly. Mm -hmm. And those who I have a history with the, the kids, that's what, where I want to be. So I can adopt probably four other girls mm -hmm. loosely from someplace else, but we have so many young ladies in our community from the age 12 to 16 that really, really needs yes. the moral support and yes. the mental sharp, yes. sharpening. Now, we have some of the kids that are very sharp, but the, the thing is where, where they're trying to go. So the first, the first day of initiative is actually ment ment mental health, men mental uh, the first one would be mentorship. Mentorship. Uh -huh. So, so, so that's that's a that's a good thing. That, that having someone around you that actually care and you feeling about that's that's so important. We we would try to our location. I would keep that kind of like close right key. now because I can get a hotel. No, no, I can, take I can, time. We can you do have Atlantis. Time. You have time. You we can know, do, you, you know, I mean, like, you, 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 man, I, you, I go you stay the green. You so, you so, <laughs> come on, we man. Do, we could do some, we could do some You're a silver so. medalist and bronze medalist, <laughs> man. You done been in Dubai for, for five months, <laughs> man, bro. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so basically, like, you know, I, I was always taught at a, at a middle part of my life and, and I, like I said, like, we, the way we do things, you know, we, we, we conduct business, Gucci, mm. we are, you know, First class or no class, even though we from where we from, yeah. but the kids are gonna be decked out in a designers designer scrubs. Um, she brought a sample the other day. Stop that! Hold um, on. They also Let me gonna, they get uniform. Yeah, they getting designer scrubs. I tell you, they get they getting designer scrubs. Um, they also getting um from a black owned company, mm -hmm. um, man, manufactured. Um, she is all. She also is one of the the model lead um, agents for for the um, company. The model. Uh, stakeholder. Who's model? 
cheap, well, cheap more, no, more the, the clothing. Oh, I can and, see. And it's the footwear. The footwear, the kids are going to get yeah. the footwear. So when I saw her outfit, I was like, man, I really like it. So, and it's different. It's almost like a joggers. Look at it. It's oh, really yeah. nice. Um, do you have yeah. a picture with you in it? Yeah. yeah. So 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 look at the shoes, the shoes and everything. The kids are gonna get the shoes, and they're gonna get the teal color, a Dream Chasers logo, oh, awesome. um, along with the. You prints. should see the picture. Yeah. So um, it's just it just it just when we do it, we want to do it in a in a this way. This is very like, important, Nate. Yeah, like we want to do it in a way like we want to do it big. Yes. We do it bigger than Dubai. Yes. So fifty you know, now it'd be, it'd be tomorrow Dubai. it could be a million, you know. You know Dubai is yeah. a duplicate of the Bahamas. Yeah, so we have to we have to do it big. We have to really be sharp, and it's not about it's not about money, but it's, at the end of the day, we need money to do it. Right. We're not gonna bother with anyone in the Bahamas for a dollar. No. So we we're just gonna go with what we have because we do have the resources. I wanted to suggest. I appreciate God for that. And I know it's gonna go to the next level. A program like this. Uh, needs to get in the primary school, so this is going to develop where we, you could you could get a, a a primary school set and just to come and talk about the program, about hygiene, you know. And she talked about the different uh, aspect of, of of you know the menstrual period, and you know the, yeah. that that that's going to be very Some, important. Something like that, something like what she doing, not taking anything away from her, is like um like I mean like she is who she is, but her, her thing is you know in her profession she. She's really good, you know. So I, I, I can see, I can see it. So you can see it. the, the see thing is, you know, she she get paid for She's motivational good. speeches. So I wouldn't try to take come anything I can't away get paid from for the motivational speeches, <laughs> man. That's I fucking the bombers, you know. I, I need to go live in the states. <laughs> she, she have a, she have a price, but when it no, comes to right. when it comes to our organization, we're, we're in partnership, so we we can we can use that brand or that yes, that, that entity or foundation excellent. or her foundation, but. You know, you have to pay for her time. Dr. Milesman, who didn't speak for free. So we, we're going to keep it in the line. And if, if it's a business opportunity, it's not about money for her at the end of the day, mm-hmm. neither. It's not about money. No. But um, I, it's about respect for me. So, I, I, I mean, you know, you have a gift. And the Bible says your gift would, would make you sit amongst great men. And, yeah, that? And, and, yeah, great men. That's so the truth. at the end of the day, we, we want to we wanna, we wanna show our patronage or, or the way we are as behemoths mm-hmm. and hospitality, that we are not users, we're not suckers, we don't abuse things. So because our culture of being changing and diluted and polluted at the same time. Yeah, sharing the love, the real so love. We, we, need to, we need to be able to, because to, to, I don't want anything for free. We need to be able to handle people in, in such a manner. Underneath the organization, everything is free. I never charge a child for a shirt. But when it comes to, to her time, I, I would respect that anybody who wants that time or want to be facilitated that if it's not through our program, to go ahead and have that one-on-one conversation. Because the platforms that you speak on, <laughs> you know, it's like, I mean, golly. Like, if you see the faces that, that this young lady that actually speak to, the, the mm, people that she I know, speak to. I know, I know. It's she, like, it's listen innocent. to me. I know, it's like, I know, I and, know. Then, and, and then minority, she's far beyond the bottom pit in terms of minority and color. So the, the it ain't our color out there that you're speaking to, and these people listen. So John four four, the prophet's never accepted in his own hometown, but America, thank God for that. I mean, Jersey's Jersey just as close as to Philly, but she's <laughs> accepted. Mm. She's accepted. She tell them about the good. organization that you spearhead that you lead right now, and and and, and ma- tell them about the minority and majority of people, and how old is the program and what it is. Sure. And you, you got to see the the class that they 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 don't put you in a hotel. They don't put in a hotel like a regular hotel. No, the they put in in a panel suite, mm-hmm. like yeah, stuff cool. like that. So this this is what this is this is who was in the front of us that they speak in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? He's so kind, but I do serve as the president of a national organization. Um, we have over twelve thousand women surf nurse practitioners 12, in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And that's considered the smaller ones. The or bigger ones are like family MPs. They mm-hmm. make up like maybe. 70,000 nurse practitioners throughout the nation. Um, but, yeah, so my profession, I'm the, I told you earlier, the first yes. black woman to hold a seat in an organization's 42-year history. But basically this organization is the go-to organization, invoice organization for women's health nurse practitioners, mm-hmm. as well as advanced practice nurses and health care providers who care for the women's health gender-related population. So I speak so that talk you heard earlier, that was actually an international um, speech that I gave virtually for Dubai. For Dubai. Yeah, for Dubai yeah. in uh, 2020. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I speak internationally about um, my areas of expertise as well as nationally. 
Um, within our organization, it's a, pre a predominantly white organization, probably mm, 85 to 90% of our uh, members are uh, white. So um, I am the minority within the organization, um, but I lead that organization. You're smart. You you're helping. You that's what <laughs> yeah. you have to do. It, <laughs> that's it, what it, I do. You have to do. You have yeah. to. You have to be able to have a group of the people and then Absolutely. use your influence to help others. Yeah, and my goal is that that changes though, right? So like I've been doing a tour with all of the other um, universities in the U.S. who have programs that mm -hmm. are building up the next generation of advanced practice providers. So they know who I am, right? But not only do they know who I am, I can identify the diversity within that group to encourage them to seek leadership roles, right? Mm -hmm. Early on within their career. I'm under 40, right? Had a great career, right? You had a so, great career. Yeah, and it's still going, and you're I'm doing, so young. You're doing well for yourself? I'm doing well for myself. Wow. Um, it's, I'm blessed, right? Yes. And I'm always saying, um, man... I was a, a young lady from the inner city, right? And people will look like my father. He always brag and boast, but like he proud of you. He's very proud, That's very it. very proud. Yes. But it's just like I try to use my platform to show people like it doesn't matter where you come from. You just wait hard. Yeah, you work Take the hard, and, and you can you can make it to that you next level, up. right? Yes. And I'm like, I have people from all walks of life who come to me, who look up to me, who want to hear me speak. I just got, I just talked to. Nate, today about, I just got my first royalty thing. I'm like, oh. I get royalties for talking now. Listen, so listen, this, that's yes, pretty that's, cool. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> so you so tell, them, tell them about um, your new, um, not new, but tell them about um, your, your, your past travels. You're going to do the whole nine lines. Your, first, line your, first tra your past travels, I mean, I mean, let's talk about your, your travels now, where your talent, where your gifts is taking you now. Where's your next trip from oh. here to January? Just to January. Don't sure. go as far. Okay, where am I? So once I leave here, I'm actually going to Iowa in the U.S. Iowa. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about reproductive health, equity, and justice um, for the American Nurses Association. American Nurses Association. Mm -hmm. So that that conference is in Iowa this year, and then and you're doing some big things. Yeah, then I'll be in I'll, I'll be in Dubai and Abu Dhabi. Before uh, Dubai, you'll be in Vegas, right? Yeah. Uh, she can't even remember. Vegas. She can't even remember. Vegas. No, that's just January 16th. Vegas. Yeah. January. No, California. Cali. Cali. San Diego. San Diego. Right? Mm -hmm. That's Nate, okay. They get all this out of you. Boy, you yeah. can talk, boy. Eh? You yeah. Can talk. You can talk. You can talk like party. That's okay. Hey, 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 hey. Or yeah, but hey, <laughs> but I, I, I have a gift. I have a gift. Yeah, no, that's good. I have good. a gift for good. conversation to speak and so yeah, far. That's good. But you know what? It was so interesting in, in one of our conversations. Um, um, we, we I, I, I saw something and, and it changed my life right then and there. Mm -hmm. Like, like I'm inspired in so many ways by a lot of people, and, and, and you're one of them, right? So I was on the phone, and I, I don't, I don't have TikTok. I don't have a video. I have mm -hmm. one video posted on TikTok, and I'm not a fan of TikTok, but it's a distraction. And we always talk about distraction in church. So I, I pick up my phone, and we were sitting on, and, and whatever, and I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, look. And she she nodded. And I was like, man, it's funny. And I was caught up from reading straight onto the phone and laughing. And she just nodded, saying, mm. yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, but it's funny. She's like, I know. And I say, are you going to? And as I force on the phone, it's almost like drugs. I was giving her, I was giving her the crack pipe, my phone. Like, go ahead and click on it. Go ahead and click. And she just nodded, like, that's OK. But this is what it is. Mm -hmm. These social medias, these little small mini platforms mm -hmm. are distraction. That is it's totally distraction. And then I call up and I say, Man, I say, I say, Man, you help me. Because that has been a distraction when I was when I focus, even in time of reading or something, and then all of a sudden some pop up and then I get lost mm -hmm. into these zones. Yeah. So that's a good balance, you know, that's yeah, a good balance, man. Yeah, but let me just talk about Boy. Dubai really fast and Abu Dhabi. I'll be doing an international exchange and from December 2nd to 9th, all related to women's health, um, gender-related health care, just learning about what more of what they do within their country and sharing what we do in the U.S. But I'm serving as a, a delegate for the Association of Women's Health Obstetrics and Neonatal Nursing. So wow. I'm excited about that trip and that exchange. Wow. Under 40. She's under 40. I'm under 40. But under the 40. thing is, in Dubai, our... Attache, not Attache, our um commissioner commissioner general. I'm sorry, the 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 ambassador for Dubai <clears throat> for the Bahamas at Dubai at the expo was a 23 year old girl, 26 or something like that. 
the next person that you move on to was a 19-year-old kid. The next one you go to is like 20, 25. Then we go on to the elders, 34, 50 perhaps, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But they hold ranked positions in the Bahamas. Um, You got to be 70-something. Yeah, you got to be 99 to get (laughs) a flipping position. Mm. To get a position, and it and it bothers me, and um, in America, I'm like a celebrity. Yes. I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I kid you not. I'm like a celebrity, and I know that, and I'm very humble. Seriously, I'm humble. I I like I, I just act normal amongst my peers because they respect me on a level. And the Bahamas, the dude to throw a handcuff on me so quick, <laughs> <laughs> just for just for looking at them hard. So, like 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 yeah. I'm saying, man. Um, Going down in Dubai, I, I wish you all the best on now. Um, just just know that you're a lady. The way you dress and everything is very appropriate. So you have no problem with blending in with that community, except in Abu Dhabi. Mm-hmm. Just got to be a little bit more covered over the head and so forth. But Dubai is a free country. Mm-hmm. Dubai itself is seven, seven Emirates. So Dubai is Dubai is safe. It's really safe. Two, three o'clock in the morning, do what you like. I don't intentionally leave your phone, but I have done it like three times in the taxi because I was so relaxed and I got my yeah. stuff back. So Dubai is, the, you know, Dubai is almost like the old Bahamas in hospital, not in hospitality, but in terms of um, crime related. Sure, safety. Yeah, tourist safety. Mm. You know, man. Right? Yeah. Wow, it's crazy. You can have a great time. So um, you're traveling the world. So. You know, we would have been watching the forum or where you're going to be speaking. We wouldn't even know that was you now. Uh, when I look on the TV, I'd probably check it out. So you're like that radio. And yeah. uh, she have a program here in the Cornwall of the Bahamas. But they didn't want you to take this uh, into consideration what's going to happen. You know, uh, you're starting off from scratch, you and the lady. And eventually, uh, you're going to end up with a, with a, with a center. You see, this is how it's going to take. It's, it, it's, you can end up in the yeah. center, and then it's going to go from there. Trust me, yeah. you know, just keep on pushing, you know. Just speak keep it, on pushing. It, just, keep, just keep on pushing, start it. Because right now we have a nurses shortage in the country. Mm-hmm. We, need, we, we need nurses to be trained properly, especially in the hospitality, you know, because there are many nurses and stuff like that. But, you know, there are good nurses. Then we also have to talk about the aspect about hospitality, you know, because you're dealing with people who have ailments. You know, they may be asking you a question, but when you're so frustrated, you know, you say some things or, you know, et cetera. Yeah. So I guess you're all going to cover that also because, you know, the nursing industry and uh, et cetera comes with hospitality. And I guess that comes again with, uh, again, let me go to the notes. Uh, it comes again with education. Education. Mm-hmm. That's what the number one. Yes, that was the yes, pyramid. Yes, I yes. think they didn't look at the, you couldn't see the chart, but I saw Scrooge taking notes and I, I was hoping that he was going to touch education because I saw him wrote it down. Yes. And then, um, but education she, is so important. Yeah, because right? she explained all of it together. Education yeah, is so important. She explained important. all of it together. That's why she yeah. talked about the menstrual period and stuff like that. So yeah. that's when we Sh- talked. Scrooge, um, um, not to touch you like yeah. that in your past because she, huh? she really don't know you on that level. But, um, being a being a former gangster was like it was real back in the day, and he actually graduate from from high school. Awesome. <laughs> you don't you don't be a bad boy and graduate, you know. Yeah, no like choice. Just, like on the street. Awesome. <laughs> so, yeah, no choice. So we had some good mentorship um, from mm, the older new people Bowling, in the neighborhood. Um, with the guy, the principal New Bowl yeah, and those guys. Bar. Bar. We had to be tough to to deal with um yeah. deal with this generation. We got a we got a call that on generation. the line. We got a call on the line, so we're gonna take this last yeah. call. Go ahead, caller. You're on inside in the city, and you get uh, Nate the Great and Miss Moore in studios. Go ahead, caller. Yes, sir. How are you doing? Fine, sir. Okay. Okay, Scoochie. Yeah. You and Nat and, and, and your lady guest, yeah. Um, what I had to say is a lot, you know, I live in Bay for 20, 25 years plus. Let me turn down my radio. And you know I, what I can't. You know I, I I live in the United States and I live in Canada. But I went to a seminar in Canada, and um, that's what I've learned that men usually get breast cancer. Mm-hmm. You know, and I came back home and I I told told some of my friends. I said I warned some of my friends about that. They man, they they get so hysterical. They couldn't believe it that man that man does get breast cancer. Mm. I wonder what the young lady have to say about that. 
Yeah, so breast cancer can occur in males. Um, where I practice at clinically in the U.S., we do a screening. Um, and one of the questions we ask in terms of individuals have an increased risk for development of breast cancer if they had a male family member who did have breast cancer. So wow. not common, but breast cancer can occur in males. Wow. I call it. Go ahead. Yeah, th yeah thank, you, thank you very much. You know, that's, I just want to put that little one in there. You know? okay. Con confirmation. <laughs> confirmation. Yeah. Education yeah, is very, very important. Much. Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, your brothers ain't clowning <laughs> you no more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks very much, man. Right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And that's right. true. The information is power, no knowledge. Yeah. And, 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 you know, you can go biblical if you want. Mm -hmm. but, but you must... Sometimes you just got to hear from some people. Sure. And that's why we need programs like this in the inner city community. Because when a young female comes and she asks this question, mm -hmm. or what a man show, you have the education and the program there. And then you could get supplies. Right. You know, that, you know it's just important because like, she talked to me, ask the truth. That, that, I, 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 I told you, it's like, like everything is divine. Uh, when I told her, I said, um, I say, man, I deal with these girls in, in the program. And I would tell them because I sound harsh. You know, because, you know, you're dealing with numbers. And I'd be like, hey, um, hands up, who bid? And if the young girls don't bid, I, I send them like mm -hmm. I send them back upstairs because we had a protocol. The, the girls got to bid mm -hmm. when they come to the program because I, I witnessed when I was younger. And I just couldn't put in scientific terms because sure. we speak different. And um, I say, man, if you if if, if y'all ain't bid, they could they could put their hands up there. This is true. Excuse me, I never have to play with them because I had them every day. I say, y'all ain't bid. You got to go back upstairs. The girls got to be it. But how I did it was I, I'd be like, yeah. a point. And then, mm -hmm. because I know what that scent was like when I was young. Sure. I, I saw that blood coming down the leg. I saw these things. And I was like, look, I don't want the, I don't want y'all to ever be targeted for the rest of your life mm -hmm. and shut down in the house because the you. boys, them, you. see you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you being able to put it together, it's it, a it very, sound better. It's a very important program we need. We have the mentor program for, for address young boys, and we need a program for females mm -hmm. in the inner city community, in the schools, and in the country at large, and programs exactly we need. You know, everything yeah. about about it. These things yeah. are lacking in our community. Mm -hmm. you understand? Sustainable so, programs. And sustainable yeah. programs. And we have someone who yeah. actually Can is a trained professional, right. and she has the avenue to vouch for us here in the country. I, I, I wish they would actually, see, see, we in the Bahamas. Take time. We, 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 are, we, are, we, are, we are a population of 400,000 plus people in counting. The, the, the expats that come in this country, majority of them are black. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the people with less money are black. The majority of the population, 89% or 90% are black. Yes. And 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 I and I um Scrooge would always say, boy, this this girl here, and 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 people would say, I hang around a lot of beautiful faces with women, and it's a reason why I always brought them to the program, because some people gotta see your face, mm -hmm. they gotta see the uniqueness within the way God made you as a beautiful black woman. Mm -hmm. That's affirmation and confirmation at the same time. Yes. That that if they don't see your face, they will continue to put these creams on their yes. body. Mm -hmm. You're a teacher. You dark that's and you beautiful and you ain't playing. Oh, that's cancer. Next and, you know, and you right. off the chain. You know, that's what Pastor Grant is saying. You off the chain, <laughs> but yeah. you 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 off the chain. And 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 the thing is, you, we, we we need the young men need to see us, because when we fluff through and we walk through these areas, they need to see that hey, it's okay to have your pants higher on your hip. Mm -hmm. It's okay for you to 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 you know to look a certain mm. way. And it's depressing to see that our young girls are now right. downhill in the way they feel about themselves. Sure. All right. We got one more caller. Caller, honestly speaking, we're completely out of time. Honestly oh, speaking. Okay? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to let you get your, 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 message, your, your message in real quick, if you could, please. Go ahead, caller. You're on how inside you doing, in the city. How you doing? I'm fine. Yeah, yeah. Just, just want to suggest perhaps uh, once Nate and his colleagues set up the program, they want to consider the urban... Renewal centers mm. to set up so it could be in various communities, you mm. know, from the, from the first crops. Because I think you could even do community nursing with mm. the elderly mm -hmm. once they've been trained properly. So mm. just wanted to put uh, that two cents. Yes, yes, Love the show. yes. See, 
This is an excellent, an excellent suggestion. That's a grow. That's I a think grow. Dr. Moore would be more than glad and likely to put a proposal before the government. That's exactly what it is because each of these impoverished communities needs programs like that because kids don't, females don't have the essential. You're talking about the bag and all that stuff that they're going to receive and then mm -hmm. the, the, the education they're going to receive. Carla, if you see um, um, Dr. Moore, Dr. Moore looked like a regular girl from being done. Yeah, that's I, why I, I tell you the truth. You know when she came in? She looked like she, 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 she looked like, like she, Sabrina. Yeah. I she looked like for Sabrina. She looked like she from right around yeah. the corner. Because she, uh, we and all then the she same. young. We all the she same. She was 34. We all the same. She ain't even 40 yet. Yeah, we but then the you leading the World Health Organization. I mean, within, within your yes. ranks. Mm -hmm. You're leading the team. So she could make and a big the, difference. And you're the president. That's yes. right. The president. So you know that? You see the connection? Of a 42 year old program. Yeah. She and, 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 and the majority of the, the persons there are, are mm. white. That tells you something. That's special. Yes. She, she amazed everyone there because she really wanted it. Coming from the inner city community, yeah. once you're from the inner city community, you have an opportunity to better yourself, knowing that you could help your mom or help who, someone in your family to better yourself, to live better. Yeah. She took that opportunity. Uh, you have to take the opportunity when it presents itself. Yeah, they say, say and I'm sorry for using, if I'm using too much Bible quotes, but they say, how would you know if you didn't hear from a pastor? How would you didn't know if you didn't hear from a nurse? Because I can't tell you some of the things that she's saying. You see the fellas like getting tears? Because he said, boy, breast cancer in men. And, and, and regardless if they might have seen it, but confidence. Yeah. It's true. You sound like you're rhyming. Oh, yeah? yeah. yeah. You sound like you're rhyming. You rhyme style. You rhyme style. You rhyme whole line. You rhyme whole line. I'm probably being You ain't even seen you rhyme whole line. I was wondering if you were supposed to You rhyming? You gotta hear it. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you're rhyming style. Yeah, you rhyme You rhyme style. I told you you're rhyming. You're going like, what? Listen. I feel embarrassed. That's within the spirit. That's within the spirit. So I want to. Say, uh, this is going to be a wonderful program. We have someone who has a position uh, in the U.S. willing to help us here in the country to, to bring a wonderful program, uh, empowerment, girls' empowerment program. Uh, anything that deals with at risk or females at the whole, not even at risk, but just the opportunity to help the less fortunate in the country, to be able to have uh, programs to deal with depression, uh, substance abuse, you know. This is important because, like I say, our females are going off course, okay? And to get them back to reality, they need to be encouraged about other females who are doing things around the world. We're going to see this lady on the platform. Yeah. Now I'm going to sit down and watch this hey, that lady being on the show, and she's doing a program right here in, in, in Nassau, New Providence. And then we used to got in radio to actually keep on promoting it because right. these are the kind of stuff that I am interested in because I know these are the programs we need to make a difference in our country. Because once we build up self-esteem in these uh, females, you never know what opportunity is going to be available to them yeah. and where they're going to go, okay? Yeah. I'm a prime example. Of, you ever think I'm, I'm going to be a talk show host? <laughs> or, 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 or sit in the office of the prime minister and come up with programs that actually pass as a legislation in the country, mm -hmm. you know? I never thought that. Sitting down and talking to the commissioner of police, talking to... Uh, the prison superintendent, the prison uh, commissioner, talking to the minister of national security. I never thought these things. I was on the end of the stick. Yeah. But as I understand that I have a greater purpose to serve, I use that opportunity to do some positive stuff. It's, 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 it's remarkable. Yes. So I want to say thank you, Ms. Moore. Uh, you want to say to your friends? Well, I just want to big up Mr. McKinney. I think um, he's done an exceptional yes. job here in the Bahamas. So I'm just grateful to be his partner and to be in his presence and to be able to build upon the work that he's so diligently led his um, heart and passion and drive towards. So big up to Mr. McKinney today. And I want to guarantee you, in a year or two years' time, to put this program here, Girls Empowerment, uh -huh. is going to be one of the top programs in the country. And I want to say this to the general public. I hope you enjoy the show. I want to say this again to our Prime Minister, David Atterman, right who passed away. He talked about climate change, right? He said these things, okay? He talked about the animals, deforestation, the uh, North Pole melting, if we do certain things, uh, cutting on the Amazon in Brazil, uh, digging for oil in various different countries around the world. Uh, he said these things, if we don't take care of Mother Earth. And what, what, what we must remember, the Earth is a living organization. Mm -hmm. I mean, a living organization. What you call it? Organ organism. organism. Mm -hmm. Right? Means it's living. 
and it's, it's the mother to all of us, to the mosquitoes, to the humans, to every each and animals, the every uh, particle that we could probably imagine, right, comes from mother earth, okay? So to me, from my message to the prime minister, he was speaking on climate change, sir, stop the oil drilling. Because when you dig in the earth, you're taking the blood out of the earth. And then you're going to use it to put in the cars, which actually uh, pollutes the air. And this in turn goes into the seas and pollutes the ocean, kills the trees. And then when we cut down the trees, when we cut down the trees, we, we, we these trees make oxygen. Okay? So let's preserve. And then we, when we're going to build uh, real estate, make sure that when we build, we say we're going to build 100, 200 houses or 500 houses, but we want to make sure that we leave the trees, uh, you know, or build up or something, but make sure that we take care of the trees, okay? Let's take care of the seas and the fishing, the fish, the fishing industry and everything else, okay? Or should remember that. So, Mr. Prime Minister, you, we don't need no oil drilling. If you're talking on climate change, if you're looking to say you want to make a difference in the world and you're speaking good on the matter, we don't need no oil drilling in this country. And protect all natural habitats, protect our land and sea parks, protect our waters, from pollution, protect the NASA from all the dialect vehicles, uh, the abandoned houses, and all the filth that we're cleaning up now in the country. Okay, let's protect Mother Earth. So I'd like to say to my guests, uh, Miss Moore, Nady Great, you guys did wonderful. And hope to see the program uh, climb to its true potential. And to the general public, I hope you like the show, and we'll see you next week on Inside in the City. And again, Ms. Moore, thank you very much, thank and I hope you. you enjoy your trip in Nassau, and thanks for the wonderful opportunity that you provide. Even though you're a visitor, but you're a humanitarian, and you're here to bring some help here to the Bahamas, and we really appreciate you and your team of people who are assisting us here in the country with this wonderful program. And I'm, I'm like, I, like I said again, this program, you're going to see in the next year or so, we yeah. are talk about the time and make a difference in our country. Awesome. Thank we you appreciate so much. you. Thank you for so, having me. So to all my uh, listeners, you have a wonderful Friday night and enjoy yourself the best way as possible. And see you next week on Inside the City. I'm Valentino Brown. See you next week on Guided Radio 96.9 FM. In town, I say upon running. Charlie Brown say my show boy don't ever give in. Seven years of farm and watch the crops them come in. Two they see a humble thing, the lion sleeping. But they ain't for no reason, reason. Only God that I believe in.